Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today we're looking at why proper sterilization procedures are used during lethal injections. Besides the fact that manufacturers sterilize the needles, so no real extra effort is needed, other sterilization procedures are also used in these executions, and for good reason. You see, a stay of execution may happen at the last minute. If this happens, but then the condemned later dies from infection from the needle, a wrongful death suit could be filed against the state, a suit the state would likely lose. While this may seem like a scenario that is unlikely to occur in real life, in fact, this is not the case at all. Relative last minute granting of a stay of execution is incredibly common, though ones where the needle is already inserted are rare. That being said, it has happened before. Exhibit A. James David Autry Autry was convicted of murdering convenience store employee Shirley Drouet and customer Joe Brassard, who was in the store at the time. There was another customer in the store who was also shot but not killed. What did Autry get out of this? Some beer worth $2.70, which is about $7.41 today. He didn't take any money from the cash register, just the beer. About three years after the murders on October 4, 1983, Autry found himself strapped down with a needle in his arm, about to be injected with a concoction of chemicals that would end his life. However, at the time, there was a question whether Texas's exact procedures for executions were constitutional. After lying there for a little over half an hour, the call came in. The Supreme Court had ruled that Autry's execution be delayed for 30 days while they continued to review the issue. The needle was removed, and Autry was taken taken back to his cell. Of course, five months later, on March 14, 1984, he was executed. But in the interim, had they not used proper sterilization procedures, he may have well gotten sick or even died as a result. It's considered okay for some states in America to kill condemned prisoners in a properly vetted procedure, but not via infection. Yet another ultra-close call is the case of Warren Lee Hill, a man with an IQ of just 70. Hill received a life sentence for murdering his girlfriend in 1985. Five years later, he beat another inmate, Joseph Hanspike, to death and was given the death penalty. In July of 2012, just a few hours before he was to be executed, he was given a stay of execution. Later, on February 19, 2013, he was once again to be executed, but this time a stay of execution was granted a scant 30 minutes before he was to have the lethal concoction of chemicals course through his veins. Despite appeals by even the European Union to the governor of Georgia and the chairman of the Board of Pardons and Parolees, citing Hill's low IQ, Hill was ultimately executed. This happened on January 27, 2015. In as close a call as you can get, though this time the individual was not subject to lethal injection, Carol Chessman was given a stay of execution so near to the set execution time that it ended up being too late. In 1948, Chessman, who'd robbed several people and raped several women, was sentenced to die via the gas chamber. After garnering support from the likes of Billy Graham and Eleanor Roosevelt, he was granted eight stay of execution. The problem was in that the last one occurred about a minute before the execution was to take place. The secretary of the federal judge who'd granted the stay accidentally dialed the wrong number. By the time she realized her mistake and called the correct number, the cyanide pellets had been dropped. At this point, there was nothing that could be done to stop the execution, and Chessman died. Bonus fact. The general lethal injection procedure usually employed by most prisons involves first introducing a saline drip. This is followed by injecting the condemned with a general anesthetic, hopefully which won't have worn off before the fatal fluids have done their work. Once the condemned is unconscious, some chemical is used to cause death via cardiac arrest. To achieve this, usually pancuronium bromide is injected, resulting in the individual ceasing breathing. After the pancuronium bromide is introduced, potassium chloride comes next, which stops the heart. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.